sure. But every now and then, or for the most part, there is just a tiny little undercurrent of just as I'm just rubbing, I'm like, he did say nude, right? And <laughs> my, my paranoia is that the professor's like, whoa, whoa, we don't do that here, or whatever. <laughs> But that has never happened yet, so maybe I should just stop being worried about it. It might have supposed to have been, but the way in which you disrobed, he was like, oh, this, this would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. Uh, okay, we're chatting for a few minutes here with, with uh, Catherine Robb. She's a, she's a, a art model here in Houston, America. She's an artist herself. And she's got, uh, she's got a pretty bohemian lifestyle that's a lot of fun, don't you? I do. So, I love it very much. so I was going to ask you: Have you lived in Houston your whole life? I have. Yes. Yeah. What What did you think about growing up in Houston? Was it Was it as bohemian as you are now, or was it? Did you notice that you were odd in the mix of people, or don't be care? I don't want. Um, when I was a kid, I didn't have too much of a a grand sense of what Houston had to offer. Um, I lived kind of. A nice little small had a small world with just me and my family for the most part, and um, so when I was growing up, I was like, "Man, Houston sucks. I'm gonna go to one of the cool cities like Austin or something like that, and you know, like really cover myself there." And then I got a scholarship to go to college, and I wanted to be a writer, and so I was like, "Well, University of Houston has." from what I researched, the second best creative writing program in all of the states. So I was like, oh, I might as well stay in Houston and go to U of H. And so I did. And from there, I discovered all kinds of communities that I did not know existed. The writing community and the art community totally embraced me. And I found a lot of little sweet bohemian groups and communities that that I'm now a part of. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, so when you were a little girl growing up on the mean streets of Houston, <laughs> and, and and even in college when you found your when you found your people, you know were there were there artists that you aspired to? Who 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 inspired you growing up? A lot of my inspiration came from uh, my teachers specifically. Um, all of my art teachers, I had nothing but great art teachers and great English teachers. Um, as far as the bigger art world, I think Art Crumb. It inspired me a lot. I discovered Weirdo Magazine and all of the work that he produced for right. that. And I was like, I want to create my own Weirdo Magazine. I'm going to call it Crackpot. Thank and you. <laughs> that, it never happened. But I don't even really draw like art from, but his brand of strange and social commentary really spoke to me. Gotcha. And so, yeah, that worked for me a lot. It, it sort of carried me through a great deal of work. <laughs> So, were there other artists in your home, or your 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 parents, your sister, your anybody oh, else? Yeah. Um, my dad is a great painter and musician. And what's uh, he play? Huh? What's he play? Oh, he plays the piano, the guitar, drums. Started teaching himself violin. Uh, he, yeah. <laughs> That's talented. great. That's yeah. great. I have fantasies about buying a new instrument every year. In January, just buy a new instrument and then spend an hour a day for, with that instrument for a year and just see how many instruments I can I can learn throughout my life. So far, I've managed to learn seven chords on a guitar, and I'm 50. So <laughs> that's, that's more than I have. Right. Yeah, I have a banjo that is absolutely beautiful, and all it does is just sit in its case, and I feel really bad because it's a beautiful instrument, and I'm a huge fan of the banjo, but music is not my inclination at all. Oh, goodness. So no singing yeah. in the shower for you? No, not really. No. Just a lot of lectures in the shower. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, my, my, uh, I actually, my twin sister is also an artist. She went to the high school for performing and visual arts, and she does, like, collage work, and she's just beautiful. When she was in high school, she did enormous um, portraits, and she did it out of mixed media and threads and things like that. And she's very talented, and she's still working on her collages today. And so, she's actually a huge inspiration for <laughs> inspiration for me. But we work very differently. Now, see, I was going to ask you about her. I didn't know. I know she. I've only seen pictures of her on the, on Facebook. I've never never met her personally. So I don't. I didn't know if she was an identical twin or if she was a fraternal twin. Yeah, we are 
technically identical, but I think we look very different. You, and we also try to look different. <laughs> you, you think you look different, and you try to look different. I, I'll often you'll you'll post art by somebody that's supposed to be of you, and I'll make comments like, "I think it looks more like your sister." Just. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I have been mistaken. Um, I, I accidentally mistook a reflection of myself for my sister once. Yeah. Uh, but in my defense, it was in a dimly lit room, and it was a full-length mirror, and I had never been there before, so I was very disoriented, and I just was looking for a familiar face. <laughs> oh, look, there's my sister. <laughs> Wait a minute. Like <laughs> that, that, on that, do you, did you do this? Did you do the twin thing like they do in the love boat, where you you swap boyfriends or girlfriends for the day and and try and don't let anybody know and or or take each no, other's we tests? Never, we were never good enough actors for that. Gotcha. Like, it would be very obvious that we were pulling something. Plus, I think the subtleties to anyone that cared already knew who which was which. Sure. And I think my fourth grade teacher had the brilliant idea to switch our class switch us in, in each other's fourth grade classes and the only person who fell for it was her teacher gotcha and that was the closest Frank we ever got to successfully <laughs> so you never did the Fred and George thing where you said honestly you, you even know us you call yourself our mother you never did that kind of stuff no not really pretending to be your she sister knows that's better yeah <laughs> I have I have friends Growing up, my, my my very good friends Kenny and Tracy, obviously our fraternal twins, don't look anything at all alike. She's about two minutes older than him, and and we would all be at McDonald's, for instance, and she would order a kid's meal, McNuggets, and then Kenny would be right behind her, and he'd say, "I just don't know what I want," and she'd turn around and say, "Well, when I was your age, I would always get," because you know she was his age two minutes ago. <laughs> That's adorable. Ah, That's very clever. That's I've always thought that was hilarious, and I, I'm always looking for twins to put to make to get that to happen on camera because I think that'd be funny. All right. You know what's funny is that even though I'm a twin, I still get wowed by other twins, and I have to remind us, oh, it's, it's not that special. But I'll I'll go right up to a pair of twins and be like, can you guys read each other's thoughts? And no, I don't remember. It's not that special. <laughs> But you know, I, I think I forget that I'm a twin because we're so very. She's my best friend on the planet, but she shaves her head and she has a ton of tattoos and piercings, and so, and personality-wise, I'm a lot more. She looks like the extroverted one, but personality-wise, I'm the extroverted one, and she's much more shy and reserved. And so I she doesn't. That she doesn't model nude then. Not at all. No. Okay. She tried once uh, on my behalf. I accidentally double booked one time, and I, I was like, I need to find a model. And so I called my sister and I asked her, just out of the blue, if she would do it for me. And she goes, Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try it once. And she did, and she said, I'm never doing it again. Right. And I was like, Really? Why? And she said, It's just, uh, and this really shows just how different our personalities are. She found it utterly emotionally and mentally exhausting as well as physically demanding. She was just so tired. She just wanted to crawl into her bed and not see people for the rest of the week, you know. And me, whenever I'm done modeling, I feel utterly rejuvenated and full of energy. And that's just the way we're different. Now, how did you get started? How did you get started art modeling? Um, purely by coincidence, actually. I was talking with Gwen about it, just kind of spitballing the idea around my head. And uh, in the summer of 2015, I was asking her, I was like, how does someone get into figure modeling for drawing classes? And I was just Googling, and she was the only other person I had told at this point. And like I said, she went to HSPBA, and one of her old drawing teachers from high school contacted her, Rix Jennings. He was like, hi, Gwen, I'm retired, but I still do drawing sessions out of my studio. Would you be interested in modeling? And my sister said, I wouldn't, but Kate was just talking about it. And so if I hadn't told Gwen and Rix hadn't contacted her, I never would have gotten hired by Rix. And I don't know how it, I, I might have still figured out how to get into it, but that was my first modeling gig ever was for Rix Jennings. And that was the rest of history. I was very excited. So that's where we met. Was at was at Rick's Jennings uh, art art drawing lab, and that's a that's a fabulous scene in and of itself. He's got a lot of he's got a lot of good models and a lot of lot of drawing knowledge to share with people. That's a that's a pretty cool scene in a, in and of itself. That's cool. 
So yeah, he's a great mentor. Just listening to him talk about art is a great process. Absolutely. So you've you've been working with him for a while now. How how long have you been modeling? Yeah, since August of 2015, so almost five years. So yeah. when mm-hmm. so when we met, you had just started modeling. Because yeah. I because I moved here. How did I do? How far have I come? <laughs> yeah, I moved here in uh, October of 2015, and I think I found Rick's in the spring of 2016. So okay. so you hadn't been doing it for very long at all when I when I first met you. Yeah, that's right. So you yeah, do. So here, look at her. Wow. <laughs> so you know, it's an interesting thing. I, I didn't. I don't have any of any of my drawings of you around, but I do have. I do have a drawing of your hand as a cover to my book because you were in you were in you were the model for Rick's uh, hand modeling class and I was kind of shocked you know at one point I was like okay well now the model needs to be nude and sure enough five minutes later the model is nude and I'm it's a hand modeling class why are we nude? Well, any, anything else would be such a distraction, you know. I mean, Ex- I might as well. Exactly. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that would, I've, I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed going to Rick's labs. I've enjoyed meeting and visiting with you and your your uh, your drawings. You're an, now you're an artist also. I've I've seen you've got the you've got an Instagram. Uh, you've got two Instagrams. Rob Catherine is the one where you share your your doodles and you you say that they are. Hang on a minute. Let me. Let me see if I can find the description. It said yeah, weird and ugly things or something to that effect. Yeah, what? I draw beautiful, weird, ugly things. I think that's right. That's that's that's. I think that's exactly what you said. And I, you know, I'd leave it up to you to know. Do you, <laughs> and I and I'll share. If you're if you're watching live, of course nobody's watching this live. But when you watch this on, uh, hope, can I get you to hold your right hand up? Yeah, it'll be about that big on the screen. <laughs> exactly. So, so I'll put I'll put a I'll put a picture of some of your some of your doodles up on the on the screen when we before I post this live, um, and then you've got another Instagram site where you're sharing some of your figure modeling, and then a, you've got a you've got a blog and a Patreon where I'm guessing you can get the full access to the nude photos. So okay. you started that, didn't you? Start that with Rick's also, so that he could he could have uh, figure modeling during the plague. How, how's that working out for you? Yeah, Rick's and I are staying in contact. We email each other almost on a daily basis, and he we're just sort of inspiring each other to keep working on new projects all the time. But the virtual modeling was initially his idea, and um, he he creates kits that. Um, for sale to various artists who want a more guided um, drawing session um, via email, which I think is a really cool idea. And so I produce work for that. I happen to have a very nice camera, and so I've set up this little like makeshift uh, stage, you know, curtain. Yeah, I need to do like something that. like that for this over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's. Tough. And uh, and it, it got me thinking about what I could do for myself. And um, so I started practicing more self-portrait-esque type of photography and more creative photography of my own, where I just set up a timer and 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 just see what I can produce on my own. And I was like, all right, I'm going to create separate content content for Rick's that he can do with whatever he want, wants, and then I want to create content for myself and create a website and see what I can do with it. I'd already been toying with the idea of writing a blog because I really like the subject of modeling and what it contributes to the art world and what it means for me to be a model and an artist and all all of the intersecting topics that you could possibly think of I like thinking about and writing about. So now once the lockdown happened, there was no avoiding it. And so I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to create that website now. Gotcha. And and so I created a website and a Patreon. Um, I think the Patreon is called uh, patreon.com slash themodelspeaks, all one word. Yeah. We'll have a link to it. We'll, yeah. we'll, put, it, we'll put it across here and, and down in the comments below. Yeah. And, um, and uh, katherinthemodel.wordpress.com is the website. And there's a little bit of different content on each of those. My Patreon has the most content. But obviously, you have to subscribe in order to receive it, and 
the website and the Instagram have much more limited, like, um, semi-nude, semi-censored content. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, I haven't been to the photographs that I've done myself. Well, I love the I love the shots. Some of them, some, you've got some very unusual poses. You've got some very statuesque poses. I, I love the shots. They're they're great. I love the little art doodles too, though. I think those are I think those are fantastic, and they do resemble. They do they they do. Since you mentioned Crumb, they do kind of bring that bring that back just a little bit. Um, what other kind of art do you do? Since we've already established you don't sing, you do write. Okay. You, do you dance? Uh, you you mentioned that you do that you write. Do you, are you published or are you trying to publish somewhere? Um, I'm not officially working towards publishing, but I did go to the University of Houston and I got a bachelor's in uh, creative writing. And writing fiction and short stories was sort of my passion for a long time. But I don't know. It created a kind of permanent writer's block that I'm still battling with. So. Um, I'm writing for myself right now, and then that's kind of the reason why I started picking up drawing again. I mean, I've always been a, somewhat of an artist since I was a kid, and I love how if you go to my Instagram, you'll see just about all the different styles of drawings that I have. I can do a little bit of watercolor and somewhat sophisticated drawings, and then most of it is really just bizarre doodles of ink drawings and stuff where, where I'm not afraid to sort of mix creepy with humor right. and I think that sort of works with my personality a little bit um, on my funniest days I don't know um, yeah I used to do abstract paintings but I kind of and I had a show at um, an art gallery type of bar where I used to work and the sales the show did really well so I could easily pick up abstract paintings again, but right now I'm really enjoying my illustrative process. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun. It's it's really been fun watching you do it, watching Thank watching you. the posts go on there. So yeah. I've got a, another question about the modeling. Um, do you still get anxious? You've only been doing it for five years. Do you still do you find right before it's time to disrobe? Do you find yourself going? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of depends on whether or not I'm familiar with the space and which space. For whatever reason, sometimes, even if I've worked at a place multiple times, like Rice University for some reason makes me more, more nervous than certain other studios and classrooms, and so I have a jittery, nervous energy when it comes to that place, even though the professors and I have worked with each other multiple times by now. But, um... Definitely at a place like Rick's Jennings, like there's no no anxiety whatsoever, right. and I'm I'm more than just confident, and I, I feel like the type of model that I think I look like, and it's and it it gives me all the sense of of uh, of of drive and inspiration that I that I enjoy about modeling. Sure. But every now and then, or for the most part, there is just a tiny little undercurrent. Of just as I'm just rubbing, I'm like, he did say nude, right? And <laughs> my, my paranoia is that the professor's like, whoa, whoa, we don't do that here, or whatever. <laughs> but that has never happened yet, so maybe I should just stop being worried about it. It might have supposed to have been, but the way once you disrobed, he was like, oh, this, this would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to embarrass her and make her put her clothes back on, right. so she can just stay. Like yeah, that this would be this would be fine. I'm doing a favor now. You know? Right. <laughs> so okay. So how does being nervous affect you when you when it does happen? How does it affect your poses? Do you find it? Do you do you find it difficult to maintain that Zen focus that you need to hold a pose for five ten minutes? A little bit. Yeah. I um I I don't know how much the artist can see it at all. Um. But I can feel when a pose is self-conscious, yeah. and it doesn't have the, the confidence or the, the, the strength of a pose when I'm in a really good headspace. And so it is kind of important <coughs> for me to, to let go and to, if I am nervous, I'll, I'll try to push myself through it by focusing on my breathing and, or reminding myself that I've done it before and that I like doing it and that... Everyone is too busy wanting to draw something good to worry about me performing to the best of my ability. Right. So 
Go in your head tapper and just keep working. Yeah, that's right. When we get up there, we're, we're too busy trying to figure out how the inside of that elbow relates to that breast, to that rib cage, to to that leg yeah. that's that's out in front of it. And once we once we get focused on that relationship, we've forgotten all about your discomfort up there on the stage. But I will tell you, yeah. and I've never noticed it with you, but I will tell you, we notice you know goosebumps. We <laughs> we notice you know, so when our, when an artist can't hold a pose because they're they're kind of shivering or you know even if it's just nervous cold instead of physical cold we that that's pretty that's pretty obvious and I was uh, I was at a place in Oklahoma City where the model was in her Zen thing and we we were five minutes into a twenty minute pose and then all of a sudden she just fell forward hacking because she forgot to swallow. She was, in, <laughs> she was in her Zen pose and the saliva had just collected and then all of a sudden just dumped down the back of her throat and she choked. Oh, and, but she, she just come up laughing because you know the whole her whole problem was she was in her happy place and she forgot to swallow. So <laughs> that, I've never had that happen. Yeah, yeah, I've, well, I've never I, forgotten to swallow. I've never fainted. I've heard about you know that whole story before. I'm very glad I've never fainted. Well, I fallen, you know, just lost my balance. I hope none of that so ever happens to, to you. you. I was like, you've drawn me several times. Have there been days where you thought I, you know, was was on a roll, and then other days where you're like, she's she's missing the mark or anything like that? Actually, yeah. actually, no. I've always found I've always you and Masha uh, and I can't think of the name of the other one. There's another. There's another young lady, and then a a a, a fella. The, the just the just your poses are fantastic when you guys come in you it's like you're professionals it's, it's like you have a you have a pro state of mind when you come in and and you know if you're not feeling it you'll shift pose until you get into a pose that you are feeling it and that's you know that's all the, that's all the artists care about is that you can maintain the pose and that it's an interesting pose and so I've never noticed that with you I have noticed that he had a ballet dancer come in a couple of times and I noticed that she was she was a bit flighty. She's she's a beautiful young lady, and she was she was fun to draw, but she was a bit flighty in her poses. She didn't make it. In, in my point of view, she didn't make it past the ten minute poses. But she was also she didn't. I don't want to talk bad about other models, but she, she sometimes sometimes they don't they don't pose interestingly. They don't they don't give thought to what the artist is dealing with so you get like they'll stand up straight and they'll do something fun with their hands and stuff but their hands and stuff are behind them and all you get is a three-quarter view of their backside and, and that's uh, well that can be fun I mean it's, it gets boring if it's the same thing over and over or they'll or they'll always face the instructor in every post they'll always face the instructor and they'll never remember mm -hmm. to turn for the people on the other side of the room and, and I've always wondered why and maybe you can answer this. I've always wondered why once you hit a really good pose facing the instructor, why not just turn it the exact same pose 180 degrees <laughs> to the exact same pose to the other side of the room? So that other I've thought about doing that. I'm always afraid that someone's going to call me on it and be like, she's using the same pose. Like yeah. anyone's going to care, you know? Right. Now, I, yeah, the art two fitting in the same spot, yeah, the, just that rotating might be enough, but... I'll, I'll I'll try to do something like that, but at the same time, it's important to me to keep it as varied as possible. Sure, but sure. I think about that too. I, I as an artist, it, it tends to frustrate me if if the model isn't doing all they can as far as being a, an interesting figure goes. I'm, I also don't want to be too judgmental or whatever, but it's something that I take into consideration as a model is what is trying to be as interesting and useful, you know, utilitarian as possible. Because uh, cause I understand that I'm, I'm an object to be, you know, for the use, for the practice of other artists. And frankly, knowing my, knowing my role in that gives me a lot of um, confidence, you know, and, and it gives me a lot of um, responsibility that I'm really proud to uphold. And I remember when I first started, I that pressure kind of made my poses really weird and awkward. And Ricks was really good about showing me pictures and seeing, so I could see what I was doing. And eventually, I started going to drawing classes, and so being on both sides of the stage really helped me with that. And uh, I actually thought it would be really fun to offer some sort of tutorial or class, or or I would probably just end up making it a blog, but giving other models guidance on do's and don'ts on how to be a good model so that they don't focus all of their energy in one corner or, you know, if they don't know what to do with their hands or their 
head or whatever, you know, I would be I'd be happy to help out in that way. I think you totally should. I think by by the time you wrote your twentieth blog post about it, you'd have a book. Yeah. <laughs> So, I have so I, one more question. You you've got a Facebook page set up on the professional modeling side. You've got a Facebook page set up for models to log in and join, so that if somebody can't, for instance, can't cover uh, a gig that they've signed up for, they they can fish out for somebody else to cover the gig. Is that still operational? Is that still is that has that been helpful at all? Is it working? Um, it, it is still open. It's called the Houston League of Art Models, and um, I it it's not as functional as I wish it were. Even before lockdown, it, it was supposed to operate as a as a much more active sort of bulletin board. But it turns out that a lot of artists just sort of use it to do self promoting or. If someone did use it for the intended purposes of finding models or finding artists or gigs or something like that, other people wouldn't see it in time. And so, uh, as as an and as a manager of that Facebook group, I don't know what I can do to make it more functional. But it's there. I was really hoping for it to be an opportunity for artists and models to connect with each other. But it seems like word of mouth and one artist passing a model's phone number to another artist is still just the best, most trustworthy way sure. uh, to do it. I've, I've posted on behalf of, I think it was Rice University saying that they needed more models, and within a couple of days I got an email saying, hey, I really appreciate you posting it on your Facebook page, but can you take it down now, because we're getting a lot of unnecessary emails. So I was like, okay, so I understand that a lot of people aren't going to be on the page for the right reasons, and it's hard for me to mediate that right now. Right. So if, if someone wanted to help me out on the more practical side of running a Facebook page, I'm more than interested, but it's there in theory. <laughs> I don't know. I I found that on the few pages that I've dealt with, you only get about 3% participation. So you, you need, you know, you need 100 people to get 3 people to to actually engage on a regular basis. And, and it just it just seems like have you tried the I know. Obviously, this is a brand new thing. Have you know, have you seen the the uh, Facebook Messenger groups where you can that you set up your groups in Messenger and then they get a, then they get it pushed to their phone. So if they if they sign up for that, then you can as an admin you can eliminate them if they're not pro, if they're not proactive. But I don't know. That, that might be a yeah. I don't know about that. Um, a couple of months ago, I did sort of like a roll call to see who were active people on the page. That way, I can weed out some of the less active people, but I've added more people since then, and not a whole lot has changed. Sure. You know, it was <laughs> well, you have you have any other big plans? I mean, you've got this whole modeling gig going on, you've got this lifestyle thing going on. You have, you have any big plans? you have any world tours engaged or anything like that? No, I wish I knew how to become a traveling model. That would That's kind of my dream, is to hit up studios and galleries all across the country and be like, you want me in your studio because people are dying to draw me or something like that. But I, I I just don't know. Especially right now as far as big prospects go with the lockdown, kind of everyone has turned into a model online and, and I offer kind of a, a much more narrow market of of virtual modeling. I mean, I'm not, I don't do cosplay. I don't have an OnlyFans account. I don't do anything super, you know, risque or or uh, lingerie oriented. Simply yeah. because that's not my comfort zone. And it's boring. Um, it's it's boring. It's it's everywhere. If you if you if you scan the the Instagram for internet models and you start scanning through there, everybody's over the shoulder showing their butt doing one of these things. It's it's all the exact same poses over and over and over again. It's just different people and even people who you know are great models like you or, or Masha or even people you know are fabulous models. You see a lot of times they tend to fall into the same set of poses that they, they, I guess they think people want to see, and, and I'm over here going, you know, as, as interesting as that is, I'd, I'd rather see you do something like brush your teeth. <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather oh, see yeah. you in some, I'd rather see you turn something normal into into art. I'd rather see you, I'd rather see you in a more natural setting than, than just... I completely agree. 
yeah. See, you know the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. Um, you might notice I'm not. I, I hardly ever look at the camera whenever I'm doing poses because I want something that's slightly more. I want something that mimics the studio setting. I want it to be, you know, visually artistic so that people who aren't artists are are intrigued and 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 captured by my photography qualities, but I also want to offer something specifically for artists that use the human figure as drawing references. Gotcha. So I'm trying to do a little bit of both in that way and so because what I'm offering is it has a very narrow, you know, uh, market then I'm my prospects for this as a career are kind of humble right now. I, I have big dreams that I that I really, you know, break through the art communities and stuff. But right now, my following is very local and very loyal, and so I'm very grateful for that. And I'm just going to play the waiting game and be really patient and continue to harness the artistic exploration of this sure. and not worry too much about the other models that are out there because they're doing their thing and I'm not treading on them at all. So and we don't have to tread on each other at all. So Well there you go. Well it's it's been it's been absolutely fabulous chatting with you. And, and okay. I, I, I hope I hope uh, I hope you ha have a lot of success. I'd like to see that book. I'd like to see you write that book about how to how to break out into the art modeling. There's a thin line between art modeling and cheesecake. I, I I'd like to see you write that book on how to on how to break out into uh, into art modeling because I think you're a fabulous model when it comes to that. And again, I can't tell you enough. I really do appreciate your your drawings, your line drawings. I think they're I think they're they're fun and ex and very interesting. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, and, and I admire you as an artist as well. So thanks so much for, for interviewing me today. It was really great talking to you. Thank you as well. All right, we'll be in touch.